To start, you can see I have two pieces of cherry and two pieces of maple. These are the boards we're gonna to use to make our cutting board. You can see they're pretty rough and beat up around the edges and they're all different lengths. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a cross cut to make them all 16 and a half inches. Next, we're gonna use the miter saw to make all the boards the same length. Now we're going to move on to the planer. To start, I want to measure the thickness of each board so I know what height to set the planer to. Once I get the planer to that height, we can start feeding the boards through. Now we don't want to make the boards too thin at this point, we just want to clean up the faces on both sides of the board. Once we're done planing, we can sand the face of each board to remove any tool marks left behind by the planer. The faces of each board are going to be glued together so we can make an edge grain cutting board. So we want each face to be as smooth as possible so we eliminate any gaps between the boards. This video is sped up so I'm moving a lot quicker than normal. But keep in mind, it's a good rule of thumb to move about 1 inch per second when using an orbital sander. Now we're going to use the table saw to start cutting the edges so we have a nice clean edge to start with. Once you finish your cut, make sure you always wait for the blade to come to a complete stop before grabbing the small piece of scrap wood left behind. With that board done, we're going to repeat the process for the other boards. For our next cut, we need to set the table saw to an inch and one quarter. These inch and a quarter strips are going to be turned on their edge to make our edge grain cutting board.
once you get enough pieces to make up a decent sized cutting board, you can move on to the gluing table. At the gluing table, we're going to set up all our strips on their edges in the order that we want to glue them. We're going to use a minimum of three clamps and make sure all the clamps are relatively even to make it easier to clamp when you're done gluing. Here I need some glue and some paper towels to clean up the mess when you're finished. To start, you're going to want to apply a generous bead of glue to the inside face of the first strip. You're going to use your finger or some paper towels to fully cover that face. You don't want to have any dry spots. Repeat the process for all of the other strips and push the strips together as you get them glued. You want to move somewhat quickly so you don't have any risk of the glue drying before you get them clamped. You also want to make sure that the wood glue you are using is non-toxic and food safe. It'll have this clearly labeled on the bottle. Once you finish gluing, you can quickly line everything up and get the clamps fully clamped down as tight as you can. You want to make sure nothing slips out of place or slides up. You want to try to make the board as flat as possible. You can use some paper towels to wipe off any excess glue from the top and the sides. And once it's dry, we'll get the glue off the bottom. We're going to need to wait about 24 hours for the glue to fully cure. Now that the glue is fully cured, we can loosen the clamps and remove the cutting board. The cutting board might be a little bit stuck to the clamps, so you might have to use just a little bit of force to break it free. I'm going to use an old chisel to try and scrape up some of the dried glue on the bottom to help prevent any unnecessary wear and tear on the planer. Once you're ready for the planer, you can start by measuring the cutting board at its thickest point. If you glued it up well, it shouldn't be much different than the inch and a quarter that we started with. Mine's really, really close, so I'm going to set my planer to an inch and a quarter to get my first pass done. I don't want to take off a lot of material here, I just want to make sure that each face is smooth. Now that the first pass is done, I'm going to repeat this process one or two times on each face until the faces are smooth. Now that we have smooth faces, we can move on to the miter saw and make the edges straight. The first cut that we make is just going to clean up one of the edges. I'm trying to cut off as little as possible on this first cut. For the other edge of the board, I'm first going to measure 16 inches and then make my cut. To clean up the long edges of the board, and to give the cutting board just a little bit of style, I'm going to measure and cut off about a quarter inch from both of the long edges.
Of course, if you happen to cut off just a little less than you need, you can just run the board through again and get the exact measurement you need. Now we're going to sand the cutting board again, first with 120 grit sandpaper, and then following that up with a 240 grit sandpaper. Now I'm going to move on to the routing table to give a nice decorative edge to my cutting board. I like to do the end grains first because those tend to chip and I can mask that when I do the edge grains. And believe it or not, we're sanding once again, this time to remove some tool marks left behind by the routing table. Once we finish sanding, we're going to move on to the laser engraver. To start, I want to pick a pattern that I like. Then I need to set up an outline of my cutting board to the exact dimensions of my actual cutting board. Once I have that in place and zero it out, I can now import the image that I chose. For this project, I decided to use an image of some mountains and a pine tree. Once I get this aligned, the computer will know exactly where to engrave the image. Next I need to tell the computer which layers I want it to read from. I also need to set my speed, power, and PPI settings. Now I'm ready to put my cutting board inside the laser and make sure that the depth is set correctly. Once I get everything squared up and aligned inside the laser cutter, I can hit print and let the laser cutter do the rest of the work. Once the laser cutter is done, you guessed it, we can start sanding again. Now this time we're sanding to get the burn marks off left behind by the laser cutter.
Before we finalize the cutting board, you want to inspect it closely to make sure you're happy with the end product. It's difficult to make changes after you apply the cutting board oil. For this cutting board, we're going to be dipping it in a food grade white mineral oil. Be sure to cover the board completely. The oil is going to soak into the pores and seal the wood. You want to do this about five times over the course of a week. Keep in mind that a wood cutting board needs continuous maintenance. Here is our final cutting board, and as always, thanks for watching.